It was just said on this very show yesterday, Republicans are seen as a group of old white guys. Whether true or not, that's the perception. On the other side of matters, Democrats are seen as a mix of just about everything and everyone. However, there is a white guy factor here to be considered as well. And plenty of those on the left are uncomfortable with the characterization. Our guest is a conservative elections analyst, political historian, and writer for the Weekly Standard who covered this exact topic. Welcome Jay Costa Midpoint. Jay, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Jay, there's that title, The Democrats' Problem with White Men. Sits right out there on Weekly Standard. You're going to have everybody stopping for this one. What exactly do you mean by this? Well, I don't mean it in the way people might think, that the Democrats don't get enough white men to vote for them. I, th I think their problem right now uh, is that they have a presumptive nominee with an enormous amount of baggage who can't be stopped. That's Hillary Clinton. The problem that they have is they can't stop her because... The party itself is made up at the grassroots of predominantly white working class women and racial and ethnic minorities. But the elite quarters of the party, the places where you draw your presidential candidates from, is 70 percent white. Seventy percent of sitting Democratic governors and sitting uh, Democratic senators are white men. And as a matter of fact, there's only four sitting governors or senators who are non-white out of more than 60 total office holders. OK, but correct me if I'm wrong. The left is always hammering away at the right as being the party of the old white guys. So then doesn't it say that they really have sort of the same problem on the left? They just kind of hide it better? Yeah, I think that's probably true. Uh, I think that the, the cr criticism about the Republican Party as being the party of old, of old white guys is just a rhetorical, you know, hammer uh, to alienate or to keep would-be Republicans who happen to be non-white from voting for the GOP and voting Democratic instead. Uh, but yeah, I think the Democrats, uh, you know, the elite quarters of the Democratic Party are not reflective of its broader grassroots. And so I think that the Democrats are culpable here as well. Why does this matter then, not only to the Democratic Party, but to the procedure and to the politics as we move forward towards 2016 and beyond? Well, it matters in terms of Hillary Clinton. As a white woman, uh, Hillary has an enormous advantage, a sort of a demographic advantage within her party because white women are much more important to the party uh, at the grassroots than, than, than white men. Moreover, Hillary Clinton, while she doesn't have a demographic connection to Latinos and African Americans, she has history with them. She did very strongly with Latino voters in the 2008 primaries, and African Americans were strong supporters of her husband in the 1990s. So the, the challenge Democrats face is if they're worried about Hillary Clinton as a good quality nominee for the general election, how are they going to stop her? Martin O'Malley, Jim Webb, B Bernie Sanders are the three Democrats who've expressed interest, and it's hard to see how these three three candidates who are all white men appeal to the various and sundry interest groups and political coalitions that make up the party. Well, you brought in Deval Patrick into the column as well, and that's another name in there. But y your other point that you make, I think, is very powerful, where you say they are powerless to stop her, meaning Hillary Clinton. Really? You would, and I, I guarantee you there's going to be people on the left who will broach at that immediately, bristle and say, no, 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 we, 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 if we wanted to, we could stop her. They can't do it, right, Jay? No way. Right. Well, look, I mean, you know, there's always a question and there's always been the question with the Clintons now for a quarter century of whether or not the other shoe's going to drop. Uh, and if, so, of course, if the other shoe drops with this email scandal, for instance, then that's going to scramble the calculus. But if we operate under the assumption that there's going to be no more major revelations coming out, nothing that sort of, you know, is a real game changer, then no, I don't think they can stop her. I think that Hillary Clinton has, uh, if you look at her voting coalition in 2008, she united white working class people, particularly women with Latino voters and a strong backing from Wall Street and various rent-seeking businesses. I think she's going to bring that same coalition to bear in 2016. And without anybody who can build an Obama-like coalition, uh, I don't see anybody really being able to stop her. Maybe Elizabeth Warren can give her a run for, for her money, but I have my doubts there. Maybe Deval Patrick if he got into the race, but he doesn't look like he's going to get in, and he certainly doesn't have the the charisma and magnetism that Barack Obama was able to bring to the table in 2008. And it's going to be the matter to see just exactly who has the money. Oh, gee, wait, that's right. Mrs. Clinton has the money. That's the important thing. No matter how you look at it, when it comes down to elections, it's still going to be who is able to fundraise. And that right now would have to be Hillary Clinton and not Elizabeth Warren or anybody else. I want to remind everybody, uh, the column again is on theweeklystandard.com. It is called The Democrats' Problem with White Men. 
it's not what one would think. Make sure you find out a little bit more about it. Jay Cost is the writer. Jay, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, my pleasure. Take care. What happens when you take a room full of people who believe in costume play and you basically decide that there's going to be a law that may stop them from coming to a city and spending millions? You'll find out that and more when we continue. Water Cooler's next.